The global pandemic caused by the cover-up and mishandling by the Chinese Communist Party has triggered a global wave of recrimination against it. On April 5th, in an interview with Fox News, U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams said, well, it's tragically fitting that we're talking at the beginning of Holy Week because this is going to be the hardest and the saddest week of most Americans' lives, quite frankly. This is going to be our Pearl Harbor moment, our 9-11 moment. On December 7th, 1941, Japan launched a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. More than 2,400 people died, and the U.S. was galvanized to declare war on Japan. It was the beginning of the end for the Japanese militarists. On August 6th and 9th, 1945, the U.S. dropped two atom bombs on Japan one on Hiroshima, another on Nagasaki. On August 15th, Japan announced its unconditional surrender. Over 1946 and 1948, its former generals and politicians like Hideki Tojo were tried for war crimes in Tokyo. This time, the loss of life caused by the coronavirus is far greater than Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor. As of April 11th, in the US, more than 500,000 people have been infected with the virus more than 18,000 have died. On March 24th, a resolution was introduced in both the House and Senate. It condemned the CCP's cover-up of the early spread of the pandemic and called for an international investigation to how its mishandling led to the global pandemic. In addition, the resolution also called for the international community to quantify the harm caused by the pandemic and to design a mechanism for the CCP to compensate affected countries. On April 5th, in response to the CCP's purchase of 2 billion masks from various countries to run January 24th to February 29th, and its ban on the export of masks to the U.S. by two American companies in China, Jenna Ellis, Trump's senior legal advisor, said, People are dying when you have intentional, cold-blooded, premeditated action like you have with China. This would be considered first-degree murder. The Trump administration is considering filing a complaint with the European Court of Human Rights or working through the U.N. The CCP virus is also rampant in the UK. Prime Minister Boris Johnson was infected by the virus. 71-year-old Prince Charles and Health Minister Matt Hancock were both infected as well. Three government officials said Downing Street was furious at the CCP's cover-up and misinformation campaign. The anger goes right to the top, one said. A major review of British foreign policy is planned after the outbreak. There will be a reckoning when this is over. On April 5th, a British foreign policy think tank, Henry Jackson Society, published a report that estimated the economic costs incurred by just the G7 countries, the UK, the US, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and Canada due to the pandemic was 3.2 trillion pounds. The CCP should compensate the UK 351 billion pounds and it should also pay substantial compensation to the other G7 members. The report offered 10 potential avenues to take legal action against the CCP. On March 31st, Australia's Sky News reported Australians are very angry about the CCP virus that has been wrecking havoc on their country and Chinese companies that have bought up large quantities of supplies. The Chinese regime should be sent the most gigantic reparation bill in the history of mankind and if they don't pay, maybe Australia can take back some of the land owned by their corporations as damages. On April 2nd, Cardinal Charles Bow, the Catholic Bishop of Myanmar, wrote an article published in the Union of Catholic Asian News and Authoritative Catholic Media. He said, The CCP's repression, lies, and corruption are responsible for this global crisis. For its criminal negligence and repression, he said the CCP owes us all an apology and compensation for the destruction it has caused. On April 4th, India's International Council of Jurists and All India Bar Association filed a complaint to the United Nations Human Rights Council, seeking reparations from the Chinese regime due to its inaction and negligence to respect international obligations, causing serious physical, psychological, economic, and social harm to member states, including India. A worldwide campaign of suing the CCP has begun. Of course. The foremost task of all countries is to get the epidemic within their borders under control as soon as possible, instead of focusing on holding the CCP accountable. But we can see that once the situation stabilizes, the free world led by the US will have a reckoning with the CCP.